All right, guys. Hey, Paul McClain here, Family First Life West Coast. We're going to go through the eight steps to success in a final expense appointment. All right, so we're going to dive through really quick. Step one, mind right. So you got to get your mind right going into the client's house. So before you step out of your, your car door, compartmentalize everything that's going on in your life, put it to the side. And for that one minute, visualize everything that you want to have happen while sitting with the client. Visualize everything what success, what successful connection, successful financial inventory, everything that we're gonna cover. Step one is seeing all these things play out exactly as you want them to play out, right? So get your mind right. Very important, right? If you don't have that right, none of the other steps make any kind of difference because you might say the right words, but how you say it, right? How you say it is what matters. It doesn't matter what you say, it's what they hear. And that's gonna be direct result from you having your mind right, all right? Second step, who you are. So I build rapport, connect with the client. My second thing is I'm gonna let them know who I am. So I'm gonna say, Bob, Mary, listen, um, what I do is I feel done right, and so I'm not a sales rep that's captive. All that means is that we use a lot of different carriers because every client situation is very unique and different. Meaning that I've had clients today, guys, that I've helped, um, every one of them I've helped, but it's been different carriers. Um, some have been Mutual of Omaha, some have been Americo, some have diabetes and this carrier's better, some have cancer and this one's better. And so we're able to basically look at the client's need, their health, and determine who's best eligible for a product. So I filled under and I could look at those options. The big thing with it also, Bob and Mary, is that these are state regulated programs. So a lot of families I talk to, they say, you know, Paul, um, I, we've looked for protection, we want life coverage, we know we really need it, we're not confused about it but we can't find anything that's affordable for us. We can't find anything that's within our budget. And the good news is because these are state regulated options, um, about every family I sit with guys, we can find a plan within their budget, which is great news. Okay, let me pause there. Why do I do all that? For one, a lot of what I'm saying is every client I've helped today, everybody I've sat with I've helped today. So I throw that in there, which means that everybody wants to do what everybody else is doing, that whole hurting concept, right? And so I'm letting them know, like, everybody I've sat with today, I've helped which means that it'd be weird if I didn't help you. People wanna do what everybody else is doing. The second thing is I take away the whole shop around objection by covering that in that way. We use all these different carriers, right? I also take away the whole thought process that man, this guy's a sales guy and he's just saying stuff for his own good, not for me. I take it away by saying I'm not a captive salesperson, guys. I, I simply filled underwrite and, um, and I can look at all these different options of carriers. So that's the other thing I do. The second part of why that's important. Third part of why that's important that makes a big difference is I'm proactively overcoming the fact that in their mind, they don't think they can afford anything. If they can't afford anything, they don't listen to anything I say. If they're convinced that what I'm gonna show them, they won't be able to afford, it doesn't matter what I say, they're not listening. So I proactively overcome that by saying, guys, listen, most clients I sit with, they're looking for life insurance, they know they need it, they know they want it, but they're like, Paul, I can't afford it. I can't pay 250 a month, 350 a month. The good news is about everybody I sit with, Bob Mary, that's on a fixed budget, probably maybe like you are, it's fixed income. Uh, about every one of them, we can find a plan within their budget because these are state regulated options. So all I'm doing is saying, hey, hey, it's okay. You can actually get a plan. We're gonna be able to help you today. Budget's not gonna be an issue. So I, I tear down that wall that they built up that they're not really letting me on the side of the table where I can be an assistant buyer because they've got this wall saying, hey, we gotta guard ourselves because we don't even think we can afford this. So we don't wanna get emotional when you ask the questions. We wanna answer in such a way that that's off-putting or, or it makes it seem like we don't need anything. I break that whole wall down so there's now a vulnerability between me and them, which is how you can close the deal because this is an emotional sell. And if they're not willing to, to let that go and start seeing this as something that they desperately need to answer the questions and visualize on what it's gonna look like, you're not gonna you're not gonna sell it. Because the two main things to closing, helping families is, is building why, the why, building value. When value exceeds price, people buy, right? And then also being assumptive. So that helps break that down. So a lot, you know, point two, you can say, that seems pretty simple. I wanna tell you why I'm doing what I'm doing so you can see the benefit of that while I'm sitting with the client. It's very important for me to do that every single time, okay? So point three, uh, the reason why. All right, so I say now, guys, listen, most families that send this request back in, uh, basically everybody I sit with, is, it's one of three reasons, or sometimes it's two, or sometimes it's all three. Most people that send this request back in, it's either because they wanna make sure that when they die, their final expenses are covered, their burial expenses, 
So if they pass away tomorrow, they know that, you know, the first thing that they're going to have to think about is, is how do I bury my spouse? What does that look like? And guys, I've done this quite a while. And I can just tell you the last thing that you want to think about is when they wake up and they're going downstairs and, and they go back and, and their spouse is not moving and, and, and they're no longer there. The last thing they want to think about when they're the next morning they wake up and they've got to see their spouse's coffee cup where it normally sits and and everything they become accustomed to every bit of their their daily routine and rhythm of their day is now forever different because their spouse is no longer there the last thing they want to think about is oh shoot how do we pay for these expenses oh my god what do we do who do we call how do we get the money what does that look like they want to just know that it's taken care of. And so one of the most important things and number one reason most people get protection is for that, to make sure that when they pass away, the burial's not, it's, it's, it's gone, it's taken care of. Because that's the, one of the only things you got to think about right away, day one, you're thinking about that. So the second reason why most people look at the protection, send this request back in like you guys did, is um, income replacement. And this is really a big one because, you know, most clients realize that the income that they're on is pretty fixed. And so when their spouse passes away and that social security, you know, drops down, right? You know, Bob, if, you know, client's making 2000 and Mary, you're making 800, that $800 is gone. They want to make sure for, for a period of time, the last thing they want to think about is how to adjust their budget. How do they, how to figure things out, how to get by each month with a different type of income. They want to be able to, to mourn, to grieve, to recover, to move forward in a healthy manner. And so one of the main things as far as, far as why most people get protection and life insurance, it's to replace income. That might be for a year, six months, two years, whatever that may be look, look like, but they want to replace that income, bridge the gap and get through that. The third thing some clients are looking at that might already have protection or whatever, is they want to look at leveraging their legacy. And all that means is that they say, you know, Paul, listen, uh, when I pass away, I want to leave something for the for the grandkids or the kids college funds or um, to put them in a better position. Or some clients will say, you know, um, we've got X amount of savings or we got X amount of disposable cash that just kind of we either blow it or it goes into savings. We want to leverage that. So if we can take that amount and leave this amount tax free when we die, why would we not? I mean, we're not going out and buying a new Lamborghini tomorrow. You know, we want to leverage that. So those are the three main reasons why most people fill it out. Some it's all three for you guys. Was it more for the final expenses, income replacement, leveraging legacy, all three? What was, of these three, which ones are the most important for you guys? So it's not a, is this important or why did you fill this out? No, I'm providing the options and this is what everybody's filling it out for. There could be no other option but that for the most part. What's most important to you? So I'm already going through and attacking the why Right after I've overcame all those objections proactively, guards down, now I'm going and bringing up the why, the three reasons why they would fill it out. Now, as you can see, um, I'm not just saying final expense, income replacement, leverage legacy. I'm not just saying those are the three reasons. I'm, I'm describing why each one of those is important by painting pictures. Like when I say final expense, that's the first thing you think of. You don't want to think, oh God, what do I do? The second thing is final, you know, income replacement. The last thing you want to think about is, is how do I adjust my bills? You know, what does that look like? I'm painting the picture of what it's going to be like. And I'll say, Bob, Mary, listen, the one thing that's probably guaranteed is that one of you is going to be here without the other. Uh, I'll just slim that you guys are going to die like the notebook movie, snuggling in bed. And it's going to be somebody's going to walk, oh my God, how cute, like they're both gone. One of you will still be here. This is what's going to happen. And so I'm painting that picture already. I'm starting to develop that. All right, now the next thing is this. Three things that I want to accomplish. So I'm gonna say now, they'll say uh, final expenses and income replacement. I say, okay, got it. Now guys, three things that I want to accomplish. My goal is pretty simple. For one, I want to make sure if you, you can absolutely afford, not afford it for one month, but every month it's sustainable because no matter how important this protection is for you, if you can't sustain it, if the plant's not here when you're gone, there's no value. So I wanna make sure it's sustainable because it's that important. So for the good. Second thing is, I wanna make sure you can qualify. I mean, guys, it makes no sense to go through all these different options. And at the end of the day, the company comes back and says no, and you can't get it. Or it looks really good, but you can't qualify because of hell. So I wanna make sure the plans we look at, you're qualified for, you can qualify for that. You can actually get the protection that we're looking at because it's that important. I don't, there, there doesn't need to be a head fake. 
Third thing is to make sure you guys understand it. Because at the end of the day, this is the most important thing. You can have a place for your family. And so when something happens, you wanna know exactly what that's gonna look like when, when you're gone. And, and it needs to be clear. You don't wanna be the client that has protection that they're like, we're good. And it's only accidental death. When they die, they find out that it was not an accident, so there's no protection. So we wanna make sure that you know exactly what you've got in place. Does that make sense? Yes, okay, perfect. So those are the three things that we wanna accomplish because it is that important. So that's how, that's that's the next step. So that's step four, right? So step one, mind right. Step two, who I am. Step three, the three reasons. Step four, the three things that I want to accomplish. Okay, so let's move on now to step five, the process. The process, and I say, does that make sense about the, the, the three things I want to accomplish? I say, yes, absolutely. So now, listen, the process is really simple, guys. This is what we're going to do. Once we find a plan that's a good fit, I can't make the decision for the company. I wish I could, and most clients do as well because it, it's that important. But what I can help you do is see if we get you qualified. And so what we're going to do is once we find a plan that's a good fit, we'll send in a request for coverage, and um, we'll, we'll see if they're going to come back and, and say yes or no if it qualifies. Um, if they say no, um, you don't have to worry about it. Sometimes they do because we're gonna go for the lowest risk. They do, um, you, you've got my word. I'm not confused at how important this is. I'll make sure we find a plan that will come back and qualify it. Um, once we find out that it's qualified and they say yes, we'll have 30 days to, to adjust it up, adjust it down, or just kind of leave it alone. But that's the process and that's what we're gonna do, okay? Okay, great. So trial closes, letting them know what to expect what it's gonna look like, and now we're just taking steps forward within that process that I just articulated. Okay, so that's the next one. Financial inventory. This one's big, and so I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna do a whole training on the financial inventory, but the thing is this, the financial inventory is crucial because this is where you paint the picture. In fact, when, when I talk to agents that are struggling in the home, typically it's simply because they're not going through every question in the financial inventory. So I'm not gonna sell you on why to go through it and, 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 and all that, I'm just gonna say this. If you don't go through it every time, you're definitely missing out on thousands of dollars every month and money you're leaving on the table from annuities if you don't ask about that, right? You're, you're, you're missing out on helping the family because that's the value builder is the financial inventory. Every one of those questions is painting the picture. When I say, Bob, what's your income? Mary, what's your income? What kind of life insurance do you guys currently have in place? You don't have any life insurance, or you do. Okay, go ahead and get the life insurance policy out, guys. It'll save 20 minutes of underwriting questions because I can see how they underwrite, you know, what you guys qualified, what risk class. So grab that because you 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 will want to save time. I do, you do even more. So grab that and I'll look at their policy. I'm just painting the picture. This is what you've got in place. This is what it looks like. Can, can I find premium with the policy they've got? Maybe they got something in the mail and, and they, they don't have cancer and that policy was, in place or underwritten with no medical questions, guaranteed issued, and, it, and the price is as if they do have cancer. So I'm trying to figure out how I can best help them. Every one of those questions, it paints a picture, paints a picture, paints a picture. What do you have in place that acts like life insurance when you pass away that, that's gonna be left to your family for income replacement, legacy, or what, what have you? What does that look like? That's how you find annuity money. That's how you can identify money there, right? So I'm going through all those questions. Health, what does that look like? Every time I ask a health question, they say, I got this, or I had this, I had that. It's bringing mortality into the equation. They're starting to see like, hey, I'm not the, the, the healthiest guy out there, right? I've got stuff going on. So the financial inventory is absolutely critical. It's crucial. You've got to go through it, right? Do you own a house? Do you have equity in the house? That's another value proposition because you can start talking about protecting the equity by covering so many mortgage payments, right? Even if it's final expense, right? If they have a mortgage, you can talk about the equity conservation that they've got. So, so you wanna go through all those questions. Now, once you've gone through all that, you've painted the picture. Now, this is where your close ratio goes through the roof. This is where you protect almost every client you sit with, is when you say, Bob, when you pass away, that income, and now if, when you pass away, that income of 3,500 bucks a month, it drops down to 2,000. Mary, what does that look like for you financially as far as covering the bills, taking care of everything when Bob doesn't come home, or when Bob doesn't wake up? How does that impact your ability to take care of everything? What does that look like? How do you cover expenses? How do you pay the bills? And, and I, I'm, I'm asking the question with sincerity. This isn't like a question like where I'm trying to say, 
uh, it's not a manipulative way or, or it's me trying to like say, hey, see, so you really need this. It's me sincerely saying like, what does that look like? This is a situation for you guys. And guys, every situation is different. But for you guys, this is what's gonna take place. What does that look like? How does it impact you? Now, when I ask that question, every second in silence that, that takes place now from that question being asked and for them starting to answer it, they're living in that picture that I painted with the financial inventory. And the longer they live in that picture, the greater the value becomes. The more they know they need it, the more emotional they be, they, they become. And I'm telling you, emotion drives motion, right? People, people make decisions 100% of the time based off emotion, and then they try to find logical reasons to support the emotional decision that they made which is why you're gonna make this an emotional sell and also a logical sell. You get them all crying and emotional about it and then you show a price for 500 bucks a month and their income is you know, 700 bucks a month. There's no logic behind that, right? They'll cancel it with, you know, within 32 minutes if you leave it. So it's, it's both. But those questions make a difference. But what does that look like? Would you have to, to move? Would somebody have to, to come in? Is there really no answer? You just don't know. You might just, you have no clue. What does that look like? And so those are the questions that make a big difference. And see, it's, it's an uncomfortable question in the beginning. You get, you know, you do it over and over again, it becomes like no big deal, it's just rhythmic, it's just a part of your normal. But in the beginning, you will not help the amount of families and your premium will be lower and everything will be minimized if you don't ask the right questions. If you don't let them live in silence when you ask that question, okay? So financial return, big, big, big deal. Number seven, so quoting. So, I mean, I, I kind of have an idea of what their what their income is, and and um, I'm not going to show them like 400 bucks a month, three and 200 dollars a month if their income is you know final expense and they're making 900 bucks a month. That just doesn't make sense. So I might show them if they make 900 bucks a month, and I kind of have an idea of what their bills are. I might show them 175.50 if their income is real low. Um, I'm, I'm going to if it's three four grand, I'm going to show I can show them two. So if they make a little bit more income, like two, you know, maybe they make. Four thousand dollars a month. I might show them two twenty-five, one seventy-five, or, or one thirty. Um, so I kind of gauge that, and that's kind of how I'm going to show the options. But I got to be cognizant of, of what their situation looks like, and kind of make sure my three options are within range, so to speak. The close. Remember when I said if, if you've got a good why and you're assumptive, those are the two things that will skyrocket your your close ratio. So this is an opportunity now where you you got to show that assumptiveness, right? And so I've showed the options, and now the close. Point number eight, I'm going to say, so listen, guys, we can't make a decision today because I don't know if it's going to qualify. But if we were to qualify, which one of these options do you think would make the most sense based off of budget and based off of protection? And I show them the options. They're going to say, I think that one would work the best. Okay, perfect. Go ahead and grab your driver's license. We'll see if we get you qualified there. We could always tweak and adjust it later. They grab a driver's license and it's done. And so that's that's the eight steps to a successful appointment, right? Step one, again, mind, mind right, one minute goal setting. Step two, who I am. Step three, the three reasons why families fill this out. Step four, the three goal, the three, you know, the goal, the three things that I want to accomplish, my goal of being there. Step five, the process. Step six, painting the picture, getting them to live in the picture, the why, the value, the financial inventory. Step seven, quoting. Step eight, the close. So I hope this stuff helps, guys. Make it a massive week, and we'll talk to you soon. See you.